Hello, it's Mark Voigt for a third time. <laughs> and uh, this is the third of three videos. Uh, uh, you should watch videos one and two before you look at this one because they give background for it. Uh, but uh, the first of those videos talks about interpreting precipitation. The second is an erratum <laughs> to uh, the 2017 paper by Voigt et al. And this one uh, makes the connection between precipitation and uh, non Kolmogorov gravity wave turbulence. Uh, and I just realized these things I'm talking about in this one a few weeks ago. So I'm just getting started really working it out. This is a slide from video two. It's where it ended, talking about resonant triad interactions. Um, and uh, I mentioned then that the atmospheric and oceanographic literature uh, talks about this quite a bit. Uh, here is a, a figure that shows some examples of uh, how resonant triad interactions between gravity waves cause a cascade of energy that characteristically has a power spectrum that goes like k to the minus three and a, a velocity structure function that goes like k to the minus one. And uh, intuitively, that velocity structure function can be understood in terms of thermal velocity as a force tries to pull a blob through a medium in which there's drag, uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, blob is going to slow down uh, at a rate depending on how, how, how big it is. And so you get uh, sat uh, the saturation condition shows that uh, the, the velocity structure should be proportional to k to minus one. Uh, and in the figure, you can see um, power spectra that are k to minus three power spectra uh, in the ocean, in our stratosphere, in lab experiments, and in simulations. Uh, and I want to blow up the stratosphere figure for just a minute to show you that uh, in the stratosphere, uh, you get a power spectrum of temperature fluctuations that's k to minus three for quite a ways until finally it shallows, uh, it becomes shallower and becomes k to the minus five thirds, Kolmogorov, when the gravity waves start to break. So ultimately, the gravity wave energy uh, turns into classical Kolmogorov turbulence. But uh, before that happens, it spends quite a while cascading down uh, as gravity wave turbulence. The thing is, this might already been ob have been observed. Um, on the left are some velocity structure functions measured in cluster core nebulae by Yuan Li, where you're looking at the nebulae as tracer particles for what the hot medium might be doing. And in two of the three clusters she looked at, uh, Abel 2597 and Virgo, the velocity power spectrum ends up going like k to the minus one over uh, a pretty significant range in k, uh, steeper than k to the minus one third expected from Kolmogorov um, by quite a bit. Also, a very recent simulation paper by Chowan Wong and uh, Matthias Ruskowski uh, has shown, if I can get away the reference, that uh, this kind of power spectrum may also show up in simulations, uh, that the, the velocity structure function you get uh, can be steeper than what you expect from Kolmogorov and in, in a number of cases close to uh, uh, velocity structure going like k to the minus one. So uh, this is pretty interesting to me. It's relevant to week three of the conference. And uh, uh, if you have any more questions, ask me about it because I'm just getting started trying to understand it. Thanks.